So today's video, we're going to be having a look at, just like a look around, walk around the Kubota M7 series tractor. Now, we're doing it inside in the shed as it's extremely windy outside and we don't want to have the wind noise. So yeah, I thought it was just as handy just to pop it in the machinery shed and we can have a look around it here. Um, yeah, so the M7 series is Kubota's largest, uh, it's the largest of their four cylinder tractors. Uh, this is the 172 model, which is the largest horsepower also. So. Uh, in essence, this is Kubota's largest tractor available uh, at this current time. Now there is an M8 coming, which is going to be a six cylinder version. Uh, they may be actually on sale at the minute in the USA and in North America and maybe in Canada as well. But uh, as of now in Europe, this is the biggest tractor. Uh, now there is a 173, which is a slightly newer model than this. Um, probably just a few different refinements on on the tractor itself but look at uh, this it will be basically the same tractor so we'll start off with the engine uh, the engine is four cylinder 172 horsepower uh, what stands out with this engine is it is quite big in capacity as in it's 6.1 liters so compared to a lot of the opposition a lot of the opposition is only running something in the late four around maybe 4.6, 4.8 litre engines uh, in the four cylinders. So uh, Kubota's idea is that by having these the longer stroke on the engine that it'll, uh, the engine's under less stress and they're probably right. We were very impressed with it in the use of it. It, like this tractor is roughly around the same horsepower as the six, as the 6930. So uh, like it, it's not far off the same pulling power uh, we were expecting maybe that it wouldn't have the same torque, but it really seemed to have the same torque. And in some situations, uh, I'd actually say that it might even be slightly better pulled than the 6930. Um, so, like everything that we used this tractor to do, whether it was like the likes of the power harrowing, uh, the, the drilling, uh, like we were running the tractor in a thousand economy. So like the tractor was running on much less revs than what uh, our own tractors would be running at. Uh, was using much less diesel. It was doing the jobs, I'd say, on less than half the amount of diesel, which is a huge saving and a huge benefit in, in, in any tractor now if they're handy on diesel. Um, so very impressed with that end of it. Uh, tractor itself, like they're, they're very well built. Everything is, everything's built strong on it. There's a, a Dana front axle in it, uh, which is good stuff. Bosch uh, electronics used in the tractor itself. Uh, the transmission and the, this is a power shift transmission in this tractor. Uh, transmission and back end is ZF, which again, good stuff. You know, so everything, everything that's used in the tractor is it's it's built to be it's built to be a competitor. Like it's built to be up there with the with the top brands. Um, yeah, look, just on a look around the tractor, some of the features of it, uh, four steps up into it, very strong, well-built steps. Uh, the fenders, they're turnable fenders, so uh, there's a fantastic lock on the tractor, so when you turn it, the fenders then stop and the wheels continue to turn. Uh, what else has this tractor got? It has uh, LED lights on it. Uh, it has uh, a Zudebug front hitch, uh, front PTO, um yeah so like it, it's this is a well kitted out tractor uh, meets all the tier 4 uh, emissions obviously because um yeah tractor is ad blue and uh yeah it's ad blue and has yeah all the dpfs and all that kind of stuff that it needs uh, and like the back end like the, the heavy everything looks heavily built on it uh, and you know that in use when you're using the tractor you know that they're well built like our plough, as I mentioned in the ploughing video, the plough is, this is a heavy plough, it's a, you can see the steel on it, like it's a, it's an EX, uh, the, the plough weighs over two ton in when, with all the discs on it, uh, skimmers, the whole lot, so like it's as heavy as most, uh, as most five four ploughs, and it was absolutely no problem on the track that we, uh, now we had a weight block on the front of it, but like six nine needs needs weights on the front of it. So, um, but even at that, it was absolutely no problem to it once the once the weight block was on it. It's a huge lifting capacity. I think it'll lift uh, nine thousand kgs, nine ton on the back end. You know, like so. 
as I say, everything is built is is built to is is built to last on it. Um, is there anything else I can talk about on the outside of it? Uh, what extras is there here? Oh, yeah, the buttons here on the side. You have a start stop on it on the PTO, so it's a little bit different. A lot of the other manufacturers maybe only have one button, but it's actually got a start stop on it. Uh, you can control your one of your spoon spool valves. Uh, so you can, if you had an implement on the back and you needed even a trailer, maybe you wanted to tip it up or let it down, uh, you could have it set up that you could do that here from the mudguard. And then the arms obviously is up and down. Uh, they differ a little bit from what I'm used to in the fact that uh, on the deers, you just press the down and it just crawls down really slowly, like very slowly. Uh, but on this here, it starts off, you press it and hold it, it starts off slowly initially, but the longer you hold it, then the quicker it starts to come down, which is a good, very good feature if you were letting something down. Uh, John Deere like, could be standing there for five minutes letting something down. Uh, whereas this here, like, it, 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 it's, it, there's just a wee bit more control on it. Um, again, like if you wanted, uh, if you just want to let it down slowly, you can just keep pressing and holding the button maybe for three or four seconds, let it go, and that'll keep letting it down really slowly, you know, so you can control it that way. Uh, Great vision out of the cab on this track, you can see one large uh, glass door on it, which is fantastic. Um, and yeah, I think that's really most of the stuff on the outside. They are, it's a quite a tall tractor, um, it is quite a tall tractor. It comes with front suspension, uh, it comes with cab suspension as well. So like it, it's a very, very well spec tractor. Uh, yeah, so I think we'll go inside, have a little look at the inside and a little look around the, some of the controls and features on the inside of it. So, in the tractor now, we'll start her up. Now she's running and the screen here on the right hand side has come to life. So, now we're we'll going to look at the screen first because when we pull outside to look at the rest of the tractor, it'll be a bit more light to look at everything else in the tractor uh, outside. But I'm going to do this inside because it'll be a glare if I go outside. Uh, how do I know that? Because I pulled out and had to come back in, that's how. <laughs> uh, so we'll have a look at the screen first before we pull out. Um, now, the screen is large screen, uh, I think it's 12 or 13 inches diagonally across, so it's a big screen. Um, and completely customizable. So the way the screen is designed is three squares along the side, uh, one large square here, and you have lots of applications down the bottom that you where you can bring up on the screen and control then all by touch screen. It's like, having an iPad controlling your tractor, so it's very, very, very good. Uh, so, down along the bottom, first thing we look at is, we've got, uh, this is to do with your your hydraulics, uh, as in the, the arms and your, your draft. Uh, so, you can see here, this is to do with the lift height, so we're lifting to 94% at the minute. You adjust that up to 100%, uh, that is that. Then we've got, next one then is the speed of the, that the arms drops down. Uh, so that's, uh, it was set at 60, but that was probably for the plough, so that's why it was set at that. Um, uh, and then like, this is your draft control, so you can change depending on how deep you want your plough to, to be and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's all all fairly self-explanatory. Next up then is like the PTO. Uh, the PTO uh, screen here has a very good feature that, well, you can adjust when your PTO starts and stops on your arm. So what you can do is just say you, drop your implement into the ground, turn your PTO on. Uh, this is what we've done with the power harrow, dropped it into the ground, turned the PTO on, driving up the field. Uh, you can set this here then that at when it lifts to, when you start to to lift beyond, this is actually the stop side, so it's, it's way down past where it should be. Uh, yeah, well then I suppose, no, it's okay. It's okay at that. So what you can set it is, and when you hit your, your button here to lift your arms while the PTO is working, uh, when it passes then the 34% mark, it's probably going to be working maybe down around the 10%. So when it rises up past there, it stops the PTO automatically uh, and lifts up to the full position. And when you get turned around and into position and are ready to go back down the field, you press the down button. And when it starts to drop down, then it gets down past well, that was set at, uh, let's say, say it was set at 50. Uh, not coming up, we'll have to use the wee buttons here at the side. So just see if it's set at 50, then when it gets then past 50%, turns your PTO on and away you go down the field. So it's it's a very simple to set up headland management that's on it. Now there is a more elaborate headland management that switches on and off and it'll work 
it'll do everything. It'll switch on off PTO, uh, it'll switch on off your four wheel drive, your diff lock, uh, it'll work your spool valves, it'll do everything. It'll cook your dinner nearly. But yeah, very easy to use. <coughs> That's one of the things about this tractor. We, we had it for over a week. Uh, or we had it for a week and we never had to take the owner's manual out once to, to figure anything out on it. Everything was self-explanatory, which is, is very good. Like We're not used to Kubota, Kubotas at all, so they're completely new to us and we were able to get straight in and once we had a couple of hours on the tractor, we were able to use it uh, very easily. Uh, same again here, you can bring up, this is all your your uh, spool valves at the back, uh, Your so you can control the speed and oil pressure on all of those. Uh, this is to do with your gears, you can change gears and when, how soon your auto gears is changing and your engine revs can all control from there. Uh, cab suspension then, what, how sensitive you want the cab suspension. Uh, this then is, this is your headland management here where you can uh, set it all up. Uh, we didn't do that, we just used simple headland management and then this is like a, uh, to do it. Uh, fuel usage and uh, all that kind of stuff so very simple to use so then up along the top then we have the likes of your isobus then can be controlled here as well uh, you can then if you had a uh, fertilizer spreader or something set up that can all be done here too you can set up a rear camera on it now there's no camera link there calculator you're working out uh, working out what kgs you want to put to the acre you can use your calculator here uh, and then there's all other settings then then this is just settings for brightness and all that for the screen so a uh, tractor then is also this is your headland management well not headland management this is your gps uh, so it's fully set up this for gps a uh, tractor actually has got the self steel uh, on it now we never used it uh, but it's all there uh, and then again then this is more uh, I'm not sure what that is. No, I don't know what that is. That's something else. So, but yeah, everything, as I say, is yeah, everything, everything is fairly self-explanatory about it. Uh, so we put the tractor outside, and uh, we have a little bit of uh, a look down around the 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 layout of all the controls in the tractor itself. So basic enough layout on uh, everything here is. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Indicators the left-hand side, forward reverse lever here. Uh, forward reverse works by uh, obviously pushing it forward, selects forward, same reverse, and then neutral then just push it away. So all all very simple. Uh, your wipers uh, is also on your indicator arm here. Um, you then have here, you can see uh, there's lights. It's all set up here, so you've got your beacon here. It's just simple wee push buttons on it. Uh, then your walk lights and all that kind of stuff. So that's all there. Uh, under the dash here then is your main switch then for your uh, your side lights, headlights. That's all just basically on it. Uh, steering wheel then. The steering wheel is a little different feel to it. it nearly, when you let it go, it nearly goes to pull back. Uh, I think it's because it's probably got the little motors in it for the for the self steel. So because it's all set up for that, as I said. Uh, to this side here we have a large passenger seat. Uh, if I can turn around, there is also a electrical socket here, uh, and then this is a, oh, it says it's for the air brakes. So I suppose you want to park your a trailer with air brakes or something like that. Um, but yeah, a couple of wee cubby holes and a cup holder and stuff like that. Uh, the seat, obviously, then uh, for lunch and that it folds down. So you have a little table here, um, and yeah. Just nice little features on it. Uh, large, large uh, cab, like a lot of space in it. Uh, I'm a tall enough guy and loads of space in this, in, in the cab. Uh, so very, very nice to design that. Uh, up top then, a couple of speakers, light. Uh, we have large, very large uh, sun visor. The reason that it's so large is that there's a sunroof and a glass panel in behind it. So, I uh, suppose for loader work on that. This contractor is fully set up for loader work as well. You can see it here. Uh, you've got a, joy a joystick that can be used for that. Uh, it also works the front linkage as well uh, by, by moving it forward and back. So, um, but yeah, if you're doing loader work then this would be very useful. And then it just, just closes up and then it's as if it's not, it's not there at all. A uh, rear view mirror, uh, quite a large rear view mirror and two very large 
mirrors here at the side too, which uh, is gives great visibility, great visibility to behind. Um, so that's all on that side. Uh, over this side, then radio is here. Uh, air conditioning controls. Uh, air conditioning works very well on it, uh, which is always important, especially on those hot summer days. Uh, then we have PTO controls is here. So uh, this here control is just standard PTO is straight up and then straight back is like the economy and then it's 540 uh, depending on which way you have this here it's 540 and a thousand so you've got you've got a thousand economy and a thousand standard like uh, and then 540 economy and uh, 540 standard so that's very nice features to have on it uh, then gear lever is here so uh, it's power shift uh, power shift transmission that's in this uh, so you have A, B, C, D and E, so five ranges, inside those five ranges you've got six speeds inside each of those five ranges, so there's good selection of gears I know. Uh, ranges are changed by pressing the little button here on the side and you can pull it back or push it forward, so pushing it forward then you can see it here, uh, you can see, the, see it up the top here, it's now in the uh, Neutral B3, so if you push it forward, it's going to C and then D, depending on what gear you want it in. So, fairly simple. Uh, then, to go in the, in the gears inside each range, it's just a matter of push it forward again. So, you can see then the, the 5 and the 4 and 3, and then the right down 2 and 1. So, very simple to use. Uh, all those shifts are all, uh, all can be done clutchless, so you don't need to clutch the tractor at all. So a little bit get used, and it was a wee bit of getting used to just to, to get the hang of that. But uh, it just becomes second nature then after you drive it for a couple of hours. Um, what else is done? Yeah, so on the you have four reverse uh, buttons here, so you can select forward and reverse here as well as on the lever. There's a little button at the back, kind of that you just press it, and when you there we go now, it puts you into that. I have to just take that as beeping because the handbrake's on. Um, but yeah, so simple enough uh, to, to select that. Uh, your <coughs> excuse me, hydraulic stand is controlled on this here as well. So you have up and down. And then this here then is just for your auto, your auto gears then when you're driving. You do, it'll change up and down the gears itself once you have it in that. Um, you then have, uh, there's completely electric uh, spool valves on this. so. Uh, SCVs. So, uh, standard two buttons here to work the two of the connections at the back, and then the other two is worked off here. So that sends your your oil pressure out the back just by flicking them. Very very useful to have it. So you're mowing or doing any jobs like that, you want to lift the mower, do any matter, uh, flick it and uh, raise the the bed up, flick it back the other way, and drop it down. So uh, all all very useful. Uh, to have them here on it. Uh, the only thing that I'd like, there's very few things I didn't like on the tractor, but I'd like this here maybe it was a little bit bigger. Uh, like it, if it came up a little bit more, that it was more like a lever, uh, and have all those controls on it, and maybe a four-wheel drive button as well. Uh, I think it would be it, it would be a fantastic setup uh, to have on uh, to have on the tractor. Uh, I think all tractors should have a four-wheel drive button built into the, the gear lever because it's something that you're flicking on and off all the time but you, especially if you're at slurry or something like that where you're going from field walk to road walk back to field walk you know you want to be able to get it on and off fairly easily uh, this here then suits your depth control or the height control of your arm so you can adjust it on that uh, this here is a lock button for your hydraulics to stop anyone if you're going to do some work hit the button and nobody's going to twist that and crush you uh, hand throttle uh, it's just a nice little lever there. Uh, this here locks all your SCVs at the back. Uh, this here then is to do with your head of management, uh, as is this here. This here is the diff lock. This here is the four wheel drive. And this here then selects neutral. So uh, that is that. These here, a few buttons here, is all you can control uh, by turning the dial and using these buttons. You can, if you didn't want to use the touch screen, see the way you control it. When I'm scrolling out down through there, so you just simple enough to, to control it there if you didn't want to use the touch screen. Uh, these here then are just for your front PTO and rear PTO. Uh, if you want to, so if you're selecting them to turn them on, um, and then 
I was, and this is then, as I said, then this is for your front loader if you put a front loader on, or if you uh, wanted to use uh, the front linkage as well. So at the minute it's connected to the front linkage, so when you press, push it down, it lets the front linkage down. <coughs> so yeah, on a uh, spool valve, uh, there's SCVs on the front as well, obviously, and they're just controlled by a little rocker switch here. So yeah, fantastic, fantastically well laid out tractor. Uh, the other thing too is the visibility out of the of the tractor. I mentioned it in one of the earlier videos. Fantastic visibility out of it. Uh, like the visibility is a huge thing when you're when you're spending hours in a tractor and being able to see see well out of it. Uh, I know a lot of the tractor manufacturers are moving away from these the, the pillar that used to be here. Uh, I'm putting in these larger glass doors, but uh, yeah, Kubota's done a really very good job on that and the design of it's very good. Um, yeah, like. I know a lot of people are wondering what is the what what is the final thought on the tractor? What do we think of it? Uh, very very impressed with it. Very impressed. I think one of the the key things that uh, you can take away from this is that uh, you, you probably noticed in a lot of the videos, Dad is doing all the driving in it, and that tells a tale on, on its own. The fact that he's he spent so much time in it. If if he drove it and he didn't like it or wasn't impressed with it, he wouldn't be in it. It would have been me doing the driving in it. Uh, but he, he loved it. He loved it from like he's he, he, the more he drove it, the more he liked it, which is always a very good sign. Um, uh, so like uh, the down things that we didn't like about it, very few and far between. There's nothing I suppose that really stands out as um, a major flaw in it. Uh, as I said, the gear lever maybe have it a little bit bigger with an extra couple of controls on it just to bring it up on power with the likes of us. The likes of Fent, I suppose, or uh, the John Deere, the new John Deere one on the. Uh, oh, I can't think of the name of the range now. <laughs> I should know it, I can't think of it. But they have a, a large uh, gear lever now, similar that has all the controls on it. Um, what else is though? Few refinements needed on uh, the gearbox itself, on the auto power, on the auto change end of it, uh, which I, I think that. Uh, I think that Clark said that uh, there was uh, a, an update needed on that, so it's probably not even fair to mention that, and uh, that that probably is simply sorted, and it just doesn't change maybe as quick as what you would like. But again, uh, the software update and sort that out. Um, what else? There's not really much else. Like there's, it, it's it's a very good tractor. Like it's if if like it. We're, we're not Kubota people, we're, we're, we've had the one brand of tractor for uh, tor over 30, 35 years and uh, to say after driving this for a week that uh, we were very impressed by it and probably would consider one whenever we would be changing, uh, it, it probably says it all. So yeah, that's, that's basically it. Uh, I suppose to compete uh, at the minute and I think that Kubota are trying to to compete with the likes of Fent, John Deere, I think they're, that's who they have their eyes on. Uh, they're probably going to have to, to get to them, they're probably going to have to be slightly cheaper than them at the minute. Uh, they, they're not going to be able to sell on the same range, but yeah, we'll just have to see. I uh, haven't priced one, I don't know how much one is, so uh, I can't really comment on that at the minute. Um, but Overall, very nice tractor, very good tractor, and uh, marks out of 10, she'd have to get a 9, that's, that's the bottom line. Uh, so, that's it, we'll uh, finish this here, uh, one other small video to make, tractor is, this is a Sunday uh, evening that I'm making this video, so tractor will be going home tomorrow, Monday, uh, unless that Clark said they don't want it for a day or two and we keep it on for another day or so, but uh, I think it's going home tomorrow. And yeah, that's it. Uh, so this video will be coming after that date. I don't think this video will be going out probably until either Monday or Tuesday. So, so that's really it. Uh, I don't think there's anything else to add uh, about the tractor itself. I suppose finally just to say a big thank you to Clarks of Cavan for allowing us to have the tractor for the last week. Uh, Clarks out the the Kubota agency or dealership that's uh, closest to us here. So big thank you to Clarks for for that. Uh, we've wanted to have one of these tractors out of them over quite a while, so thank you for making that happen. Um, and of course, if you are in the market for 
for uh, forcing the tractor, give them a shout. Uh, Darren is the, the guy down there to give him a shout and he'll organise a demo with this tractor and talk you through it and uh, yeah definitely something to be considered if you're looking for a four cylinder uh, super 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 machine and um, so that's really it uh, obviously if you're not a subscriber don't forget to hit the sub button uh, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the video and uh, leave a comment down below and we will try to get back to you on the comments uh, as I always do so Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review and walk around the Kubota M7172. We will see you in the next one.